October 2nd, 2017. And mm -hmm. I will give the microphone to Karen to announce her things. Oh. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Karen Newman. I'm going to be channeling today. Uh, as Max said, it's the 2nd of September, 2017. Um, just to let you know, uh, my website is uh, aboutoneness.com, or you can find me via the hucolo.org website, and you can join and become a member of Hucolo. Uh, I have an upcoming event on the 1st of October in Amsterdam. It will also be live streamed, but it'll be an um, event with uh, another channeler called Louise, hey, Louise K. So there'll be more information about that coming up. That's all I have, and I'm really happy. And to um, again. Jim will be doing next couple of webinars, a couple of Saturday webinars. Next two weeks is Jim's. Okay. Um, I already bought the tickets for Jim and Angie to fly to our February workshop in Sedona, and we reserved the first house for eight people in uh, in Sedona, which will host the the workshop, so we can make a circle meditation and everything in that house it's the, the big room is big enough and awesome. when we have first registrants we, we will we'll, when we need we will um, reserve a second airbnb house in sedona so what is the dates of the uh, workshop the date, in sedona uh, february 1st to february february 5th okay and uh, there is will be an extra option to come one day early and leave one day later and stay in the same house and the price, I think, will be around 525 I didn't finalize the prices yet, but um, we do it very minimal, only the price of Airbnb and the price of gyms and engines tickets, and that's okay. about it. And uh, the food is on your own, and, but there's like restaurant row nearby, and there is a grocery store, so you can cook in the house if you like. It's just a regular Airbnb house. Uh, with a great location on on the hill and mountains around, so it's, it's all beautiful. Perfect. I didn't announce, I didn't set up the system for payments yet, but uh, you know, if you want to reserve your space, you can email me max at hucola.org, and maybe it will take me another few weeks to finalize the announcement and the payment system and the registration system, and then we'll we'll be rolling and taking the reservations awesome awesome this time we'll do um you have to pay in advance i mean you have to buy the buy the ticket because you have to already paid for the airbnb so i'm already collecting the money for that so you may start saving your 525 or so dollars for for the registration and i think the limit will be around 20 people um we did with our workshop with 22 and it was plenty for us it just a right size of the group if you do it bigger you lose the ability to meet with people one-on-one -on -one. it's just too many per per teacher so mm -hmm. about 2022 is is maximum i think okay <laughs> and that's great. It's exciting. Uh, it'll be our second workshop yeah all right all right i think that's all i have and um kidding mm -hmm. um you can uh, you can start your mystery <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just going to be channeling and uh, just like always, um, any question that you have that's really burning in your heart, um, they're happy to answer. And yeah, really nothing's off the table. Um, they do have more expertise in uh, life questions than quantum physics. We will, we will say that. But you can ask anything that you, that you want to ask if it's, your, if, your, if it's your highest excitement. So we just want to we'll put that out there. And we're, again, happy to be back. And, yeah, I hope everyone's having a very joyous start of the fall, start of September. We can't believe it. I can't believe the summer's over. So I'm, I'm already channeling. Do you see that? It's already happened. Okay. Just let the sound of the children going by outside that they go by. Oh.
Hello, we are Theos. And we are very quickly into trance today because Karen was channeling earlier. So we are we haven't quite let go from the first time. So therefore the bleeding into each other. But we're very pleased to be here. And we would like to just start by saying, does anyone have any questions? No questions? I will ask a question, if you don't sure. mind. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes, again. <laughs> Hello, Angie. I'm really interested in Jesus. For mm. some reason, he's been part of my life for a long, long time. And recently, he's been his spirit, the Holy Spirit, just I've been filled by the Holy Spirit. And opinion on on who Jesus is and you know what does what do you know about Jesus that we don't know is there anything that you could impart I mean I understand that I can access that information but really uh, I know you could offer something okay we will try <laughs> The personage that is Jesus is based on a combination of a lot of of of, of different. The, the the let's say it like this: Jesus is real. There is even historical fact that Jesus did exist. Some of the mythology surrounding Jesus was borrowed, but it's nonetheless uh, uh, irrelevant or. It, it has not, not any less meaning because of the borrowing. The reason that the borrowing took place is because uh, the, the personage that is Jesus is truly an avatar. And within the centuries of man, there have been many avatars and many uh, personages that embodied the same qualities as Jesus. What Jesus brought to the world in, in his time was the Christ consciousness. And this Christ consciousness is that same thing as the Buddha consciousness, the same thing as the Krishna consciousness. It's that universal love, that oneness. And that is what you feel when you feel the energy of Jesus. So if the question is, is Jesus real? Yes, Jesus is real. Is all of the mythology that surrounds him directly his, we would say yes and no. But that's not really the, the point of Jesus. The point of Jesus is to be an example of in the world of Christ consciousness, that it is possible. This is a man walking who grew up in this world who was able to make that connection. And that is who Jesus is. So he was the personification of love and oneness and the understanding also of his true divine nature. He knew who he was, even though the people around him sometimes believed, sometimes didn't believe, but he knew who he was and he always spoke from that knowing. And he had the message that every great teacher has is that you also have the ability to become how he was because he is only a man a man knowing who he was so if that energy is around you then there's an aspect of, the, of you that can really identify with that uh, that personage and that's why each person sometimes goes into a different way when it comes to divinity. But he was the personification of Christ consciousness. And that's who he was, and that's who he is. Does that answer your question? Yes, uh, perfectly, thanks. I have another one yes. related to it because <clears throat> I get overwhelmed with emotion and mm -hmm. it's 
welcoming emotion. It's both beautiful and overwhelming. It's all encompassing, let's say. Mm. Um, why does it touch these parts of me that don't normally come out? And, you know, this is, I understand it's God. But it's so powerful that I, it's, it's hard to contain it. So well, don't contain it God. then. Don't contain. It. Well, let you all... let yourself. Well, let yourself become a wash in it. What you're having is what they call in Christianity, sort of as a mountaintop experience. But let it come. By trying to hold it off, it's you're fighting it. So let it come. Enjoy the bliss. It will subside at some point. It won't overtake you. Yeah. So allow it to be and, and, and relish it. What we believe and what we will say to you is that it keeps coming at you because the universe wants you to experience it. If you're pushing it away, like, no, no, it's too much. I'm too happy. I'm, I'm feeling too much love. Stop. <laughs> then we yeah. think the universe is trying so welcome the love and internalize the love so that it's not just overwhelming you like you're being showered by too much. Welcome it and in integrate it. And then yes. ask, ask, let me integrate this into my life so that I can share this love with others. It's great to be in bliss and laying on the floor just lost in the the wonderment, but it would also be nice if you can also now bring that love to other people. So welcome it. In other words, or oh, as grounding it, it would be mm, grounding. correct in, yes. in um, integrating their energy. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank Integrate you it that. and ground into it. Maybe ask it to subside a little so that you can function within your world a lot of people have developed a, a empty uh, they don't like this whole jesus thing because there's so much they think there's so much deception around it so they reject it you know they're and, rejecting religion but if right. they knew who christ really was <laughs> one moment it's okay <laughs> Jesus doesn't like to be rejected with it. Yeah. 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 If they knew who Jesus was, truly, they would realize that the association of religion and the association of Jesus are not the same thing at all. So, but that's for people to find out. Right. Yeah. It is very, very personal. Uh, experience yes thank you Thea. So it was beautiful yeah. thank, you. thank you um david has a question okay david we apologize for the excitement of the animals we don't know mm. what they're they're barking at but we are sure it's they're enjoying whatever they're looking at mm. yeah nice yeah the, the tail was wagging it looked happy um I have uh, two questions. I, I'm, I've been, I moved here to New Mexico to do healing work, and I started a group, and I've been trying to do healing full time, and didn't quite work out. I had a couple people show up each time, but it wasn't enough money to to have enough money for food for each each month. I keep running out of money, and I'm interested in some. Uh, ideas and whether I should still try to do healing full-time right now or, or look for work I don't really want to do other types of work um, but maybe some of your suggestions or guidance about that situation of how it's working out well, we right would now. say to you that if you don't have enough money to eat then you need to find money to eat and it shouldn't be an either or proposition for you at this time. There's a, some sort of belief system within you that is 
stopping the flow of customers coming. And, and we're, we don't want to say it like you're doing something wrong, but perhaps you're doing something wrong in your belief system as far as allowing. That being said, that is not a criticism. We would say to you, take a small job because it sounds like there's a disconnect between the true belief that all is well, everything's coming, all the things will flow to you, and the actuality of it happening. So take a small job to give yourself that security and then do your healing and allow yourself to build it up. But there's nothing that ever says that if you're called to be a healer, you're called to be a channel, you're called to be a light worker, that that is the only thing that you do. So until you have such a foundation of clients do something else as well but don't walk away from it saying well i should just have a job and i've given up there's that 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 energy is out there that well i should do something else is a statement there's a belief in there so tell us again about your healing business and we want to listen to your words very closely and it's not a criticism we want you to give yourself permission to do what you need to do to survive because it, there's no reason that you shouldn't eat food or pay your bills or be able to buy clothes or be able to take care of yourself yes yes I just um, was hoping that I was gonna be able to focus on the healing full-time or at least uh, a large portion and just work part-time and um, well you can always focus on your healing full-time by keeping it in the front of your mind and doing other things at the same time yeah but I mean focus on being able to help more people just having the time you will help the people that need to be helped and the people that need to be helped will come to you in the exact right amount in the exact right timing okay so, you don't believe that you're not if you have made a commitment to healing or to to helping the universe the universe honors it and it's not sitting there saying well he didn't help as many people help the people that come to you those people that come to you those few clients you did have are the hundred percent of your focus that you can give to them then so don't think that, that you didn't help enough. You helped just the right people who matched your energy, who met you at your energy, and you were able to give them that help. Those are the people you're supposed to help. Okay, so, yeah, because I was having difficulty with getting a space specified just to to do healing. I've been doing it at the park and in groups, and that's been working okay. I'm um, also interested in... in guidance about channeling I'm just starting to channel mm -hmm. because I wasn't able to with the issues that had happened in the past mm -hmm. um, with the uh, the healing of myself with what happened um, but now I'm in a position where I can do that what would you say about me channeling like my abilities well we would just say to you continue on how how much progress are you making in your channeling just just started um, I, I connected um, but it wasn't like super strong as I would like it to be well we would say to you again that it's as strong as it needs to be in the moment don't put any expectations on it and just let it flow if you have a desire to channel which you do then you will be able to channel but it will unfold in its own timing. We can't make it go faster for you. But we also would say to you, don't judge it. Just let it be what it is. The information that you're getting or the connections that you're making are perfect in this moment and in the moment that it's happening. So what we hear from you, again, is this sort of judgment about how you think it should be and how you want it to be versus allowing it to be what it needs to be. 
Be thankful for how it is in the moment. Be thankful for how the connection that you've made in the moment. You know, don't measure yourself against another person or a, or an idea, especially of what you think something should be. It okay. will unfold. And, and we heard someone say the other day about something completely different, but they were giving information to someone who wanted to be an actor. And the person was saying, well, I want to be an actor and I want to quit my job and live from acting. And the question was, do you have any acting jobs? And the answer was no. So, but the drive to be the actor didn't diminish. The drive to be the channel or the healer doesn't diminish because you're doing something else. You're not any less a healer or any less a channel if you're not doing it full time. So that's the judgment we think you have. You will think you've made it as a healer or you've made it as a channel when you're living from it. But the point is, are you channeling? Are you channeling? A little bit, yes. Okay. Are you channeling? Yes. Are you healing? Definitely healing, yes. So are you a healer? I am a healer. Are you a channel? I'm a channel. That's the difference. You can also be a healer and a cook or a healer and a tailor or a healer and a painter or a healer and a this. And whatever you do, the other things that you do, do them. Do them as a healer doing that. Use every opportunity to heal. It's not just laying on hands or saying magic words over the top of people's heads. Healing in and walking as as Jesus did, Jesus was a carpenter. So, oh, yeah. and he was also the embodiment of Christ consciousness. So, I was there with him. So, I've heard some stuff. Okay, then be a healer and this until such a time as the universe calls you forward and you have so many clients that you can't stop to do your other thing. But don't judge it. Be who you are in that. It's a journey. And if you were supposed to be doing it full time right now, you would be already. So just say, okay, it must not be time. And accept that. But that doesn't mean you failed. The judgment is in the idea of I failed. You have not failed. If you are doing what you want to do, if you're doing the, the job that you believe you're called to do, in any small way, you are doing it. Yeah, people are getting great results. So very well, it's happy. not about the results. Are you doing the job? Are you healing? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, then keep healing. And then find a way to feed yourself as well. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Is there... Is there anything that helps the client to believe more? I asked this because at the time I was with Jesus, they said that if they had believed in in me at the time, that I would have been able to heal just as well as, as Jesus at the time. Well, we would say to you that you have to know it and believe it. You have to know it 100% absolutely. What happens when healing takes place is that you shift people to a, another dimension, another frequency, another timeline where they are no longer experiencing their dis-ease. You hold the space of that whole being so strongly that they can't help but join you in that frequency. So they also, help, it helps when they believe. But the reason Jesus was able to heal absolutely is because he looked at beings and he knew that they were whole. There was no question in his mind. And he believed it so strongly. It wasn't a belief, it was a knowing. And then they had no choice but to join him.
in that. But he would say to them, rise up and walk. If the person refused to rise up, they probably wouldn't have been healed. So that was them accepting that, also joining him in that frequency. But he could hold that space, that knowing so strongly. That's specifically what magic is. It's shifting frequencies where you go from one place where something is not true and then moving over to where it is. That's why there is a, people say there's a, uh, how do you call it, a delay in manifestation because it takes humans a while to shift into that true knowing. They start to believe, they start to hope, they start to get a taste that it's possible. And then all of a sudden it is because they know that it is because, because they've shifted. So that's what you have to do. You have to know, you have to know, you have to be yes. able to see the people healed without any idea of it's not possible or did it work or because in every timeline, there's a variation of that person. Every eventuality is true. Every, every par partially being sick, a little bit sick, not sick, they're all happening right now. The healer is able to go to the timeline where they're not, they're not sick. Mm, that's so that's the multi-dimensionality multi of us all. So if all that is is true, everything is true. Everything is true. You believe that, yes? What do you mean? I don't know. Everything is true. Everything everything can be. Everything is true. Everything there is everything is there's everything's infinite possibility. Do you believe okay. in infinite possibility? Yeah. Does it stand to reason that there is a David that has a very thriving healing practice where people were walking away proclaiming miracles? Oh, yes. So is it not your job to shift to the reality where that is true? Because there is a David out there with a thriving practice where people are proclaiming miracles because you hold that space so well in that frequency. So your job as a healer is to, to move to that. So they say, physician, heal thyself. Well, the first part of it that needs to be healed is your knowing needs to be awakened so that you can shift to that reality where it's true. Mm, so nice. Does that make sense to you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it does. Very good. Mm -hmm. All things are true in the multiverse. All things. So you can imagine if you could line yourself up next to yourself infinitely, the, the timelines that are right next to each other don't have as much variance as they do when you get farther away. But they're all there. So... You can pick and you can choose what you want to do and experience. Okay. So much of where you are right now, you're held here by your belief, by your deep-seated belief. That's oh. how you're held here. That's the that is the yeah, that's sort of the glue that keeps you within this timeline. It's not a bad thing because maybe you like this timeline and maybe you like where you are and maybe you know maybe you want to have a different progression. But, the, but belief is the glue that keeps you within your timeline. So in order to get out, out of this timeline, you have to literally shift your belief and know it, not say, oh, I think kind of. Because then you'll sort of get there, but then you'll get keep being rubber banded back like a dog running to its leash, the end of its leash and then getting yanked back. But that's the process, and that's one of the things we're here to learn. And in some ways, you are able to do that all the time. There's some things that you have no disparaging beliefs about that you're able to just instantly bring things to yourself without even thinking. You think, oh, it just works that way. Well, it does work that way, but for everything, the only thing that's keeping you from shifting is, is the belief that's held. And the belief is, is, is deep. 
So it's, it's about finding out why. Why do you have that belief? Why? The first thing for you to believe is that you're really a healer right now. Now, right now. But it's not that you can be a healer and not be anything else. A healer is what you do. It's something that you do. Who you are is an eternal being. Who you are is love. Who you are is the embodiment of the perfect thought of the divine. That's who you are. What you do is healing. What you do is cooking or walking or something like that. Mm, such we a, feel that was very, very good. Yes, very such good a cool, amazing answer. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I'll listen to this again. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, next, we have <clears throat> Liney. If you'd like to unmute. Lainey, are you there? Lainey went to go get a drink. I think. She's on a mobile device, so oh. I, she will sort that out. In the meantime, let's go with Don. Greetings. Hello, Don. Nice to see you again, Dios. Nice to see you. I have a question for about an eighth density world yes. named Sagaya. Yes. Could you please tell me how Sagaya is doing right now? We see that around Sagaya there is almost like posts that are creating stability at the same time uh, generating frequencies that are feeding and stabilizing the energy of that planet. We also see that the stabilization is having a ripple effect to other um, planets in that area and in that region. So that's what we see. What did you do? I contacted Aranda, the planetary consciousness of Sagaya, um, on back in January, February of this year. That was uh, after I got a message of help, basically a request of help from someone in the space of Sagaya. And uh, so I meditated and made contact to Aranda. I told her who I was, where I was, and that I was going to help. I use visualization and light to manifest anything that I need. And um, so what I did there was to manifest a pyramid mm -hmm. in the space above Sagaya, and I filled it with children's laughter and love. Uh, that, I figured that that the consciousness would appreciate that after so long a slumber and I wanted to help her. So that is what I did there. Um, that I began, I began that operation from January the 30th and extended it all the way to February the 3rd, a span of five days. On the fifth day, of this action, I used telepathy, which is, of course, real-time transmission of thought. Um, I played a radio station that I listen to all the time, which is was Sea Isle 650 here in Vancouver. That transmission plays old-time radio from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And um, I played that from 2 o'clock in the morning to roughly 9.30 in the morning 
because I work graveyard shift. And uh, I concluded the transmission with uh, the song by the Cascades called Rhythm of the Falling Rain. And everybody on the ships that were above Sagai were just overjoyed by what was happening below. And I'm assuming that rain was falling on Sagaya, but I don't, I never heard back from him. That transmission was lost. And I believe that the person to whom I was speaking, who was named Rautha. Okay. I believe. Pardon me? You, you stopped in mid sentence. No, I, I said, I, I believe that um, he heard me, and I'd like to know if, how, he, how he is doing as well, please. Okay, thank you. We, we, we thought you were going to continue with your conversation. Okay. Well, we will say that the energy that you placed around the planet has had a stabilizing effect. The energy coming in, which now we know is the, the laughter and the radio waves, has given a lift to the heavy energy that was there. We're going to put our ear thing back in. Um, the rain that you were looking to fall has fallen, and now the weather patterns have stabilized, if that was one of your goals. This being that you've lost contact with, please try to contact again, because this being would very much like to speak with you. We have that information. So don't give up in your pursuit of that contact. Understood. And also I would like to add that being as I could see that this was a problem with this world mm -hmm. and I had another friend of mine that I have on Facebook, a gentleman by the name of Cameron Day. Uh, he discovered that there was a problem in earth space with what we call ankle biters i don't call them by their proper name as i don't wish to acknowledge them as anything more than just that anyway um i could see that since earth is third density approaching fourth or fifth i didn't want this problem to continue and on the date of the 9th of july 2017 I dropped the barriers on all the worlds, around all the universes, around all the planets of those universes, and in every dimension as well. This would allow for source to make sources download to the galaxies, to the galactic cores, and for dispersal of this information to all worlds everywhere. That action allowed for the creation of what is known as the quantum universe, which actually was completed by source on the 18th of August, 2017. So now we are living in a quantum universe. Can you confirm? We can say that the universe has always been quantum, uh, but it has been upgraded in a way, and we thank you for your work. That's what we would just say to you about that. Thank you. you yeah. I have nothing to add at this time. Thank you, Theos. Okay, thank you. Blessings. Blessings. Is, is Liney back? Let's try Liney. No. Stephanie, are you able to speak? All right. There is a question in the chat, which yes. is related to uh, a lady named Carol is asking, are there any messages for me from Yeshua? 
blessings. I we, we don't God. channel Yeshua, but we will connect with that energy and just ask. And um, because we have been talking about Christ consciousness, it might be very easy. So just one moment. We very much can feel the energy of Jim in this moment, connecting. We're connecting via Jim to Yeshua. Well, there is sort of a little bit of an advice and a warning for don't overdo your endeavors that's what we're hearing we're hearing that you are pushing to make some things happen uh, but that you need to just relax a little bit um, the reason being and the reason that we're talking about things that they're having to do with spiritual things you're wanting very much as david was wanting to move forward in your spiritual path realize that your spiritual path is already laid out for you and you are on your path. There's nothing you have to do to get there. So just relax into it. And all of the things that you are doing are coming in exactly the, the way that they should. So your heart is opening. Never doubt it. The contact that you're asking for, you do indeed have it. This is what we're hearing from Yeshua for you. So just relax into the fact that you do have the ability to connect you are on your path and don't put a timeline on getting there there's no achievement when it comes to spirituality there's no levels you'll never get any kind of medal or you will not say oh i've crossed this finish line and now i'm this it's about always following your highest excitement and if you're doing that you're completely on your path. When you're not following your highest excitement, you can say you're a little bit taken away from your path. But that's really the information that we have for you. So we would say to you just on an aside, just from us, that any being that you want to connect with is accessible to you. So don't doubt that. Don't doubt that you have the ability to connect because you can connect directly. And, and we would encourage you to do that, to connect as directly as possible as you can. So that's it. That's all we have in that way. Thank you, Thales. Thank uh, you. Let's try Laini again. <clears throat> Want to go ahead, Laini? We see her microphone going off and on, but we don't hear yeah, anything. Yeah, we don't hear anything. Perhaps she can type the question. Yeah, as well as Stephanie, they are both on mobiles. <clears throat> okay. We'll just wait for that question to come up. I can. <laughs> we hear something. We hear you now. Hi, Laini. Go ahead, Laini. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, I just wanted to know if there's um, such thing as horse beings, because I'm sure I've had interaction with them this week. Mm. Yes, there in fact are, and if you've had interaction with them, then you know that there are. Why do you doubt your in interaction? I don't know. I guess I just... You want the confirmation, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and was, was your interaction pleasurable? Um, it was interesting. Do you wish to elaborate? Um... It was. You can uh, say no if you don't want to. It was just. It was kind of close interaction. Okay. Was that That's pleasurable? It was just close and close in emotion, close in. 
contact. Contact. There are different beings that will manifest to you in, in different forms, but there are, there is every, we will say this, every animal species that is out there has a counterpart of, 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 it's, it's a, of a higher nature of itself. We can say to you that there are horse beings that are walking around because there are horses walking around in the same way. They're not manifest, but there are horse energies that have on a higher dimensional plane that exist. So on a higher dimension, there is a horse-like being, but not necessarily a horse being that would sort of land from a ship and walk around on the earth. So on another dimension, how were you in that dimension? Were you just yourself or were you in a different form? Um, myself, as far as I remember. Did you have physical, did you have physical skin? Did you have physical body or were you more ethereal in that? Um, physical, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because I remember fur. I remember. Mm -hmm. Well, they would have. They would have the the feeling of those things. They would. They would. But they wouldn't necessarily be like a horse man or or something like they're called. Where they're the man that's a half horse, half minotaurs, where they're half horse, half man. You weren't experiencing that. You were ex actually experiencing a horse that was a consciousness, a, a a being in that way. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're not horses beings in the way we think of horses, but they are a horse type of energy. And in your, in your dream state, you would have had a more visceral experience, but not necessarily that one would walk up to you on the street here on earth. But yes, there are horse beings, there are cat beings, there's dog beings, there's mantis beings. There's, there's the Naga beings. There's many different and, and very many of them, very many of the animals and the, the bugs and the fish that we have, have a counterpart either in physical or non-physical that they have actually come from. Those, they were the inspiration for the beings that are here on the earth. So there's no coincidence in that way mm -hmm. we are we are created in the image of god they say i we think that that is for all beings but definitely in the case of man we are created in that image so that's the case with all beings and there's many creators in the universe do you want to continue of interaction with this being or do you think it was a one-time thing we say that with a little bit of a joke. <laughs> mm. um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm guessing it's probably a one-time thing. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know the reason behind it. Well, the reason is, is that it exists and you were in such a, uh, a, such a dimension where you ran into that being in your astral nightly travels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So we wouldn't worry about it if it was unpleasant, and if it was pleasant, then just be glad that it was pleasant and know that there's beings out there again. And just also know that there's every kind of being out there that you can imagine. There's so many. There's every, po we were talking about infinite possibility. There is infinite amounts of beings as well. Does that satisfy your curiosity? Yeah, yeah, they are. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Stephanie, would you like to go try again? Yes, can you hear oh, me okay? We can hear you fine, Stephanie. Oh, thank wonderful. You. Hello, Theos. Thank Hello, you Stephanie. Thank, thank you thank again you. for being here. Hmm. I wanted to ask... Um, a question with regards to a planetary alignment that's supposed to occur 
um, on or about September 23rd. Apparently, there's a quite unique alignment that hasn't happened before in our um, current knowledge or understanding of our planetary history, and will is theorized that it would never happen again, and that it's a correlation to some passage in uh, Bible scripture and revelations. So I was just wondering if there's something that you can or would like this community to know about the planetary al the energies of the planetary alignment on September 23rd and if there is um, if it's the end of the world you want to know. Well no, I don't believe it's the end of the world, but I I do believe there's a significance to it of course. And I, I I'm think thinking that there's probably something we could do either um, spiritually or materially, just kind of to be mindful about um, preparation. That's all. Thank well, you. we don't we don't ever talk about cataclysm in such a way because we don't we don't see that happening in the way that people think when planets align. If you look at what happened just very recently in Texas, for those people, it was a cataclysm, especially during the event. But those events have a beginning, middle, and an end. And so does this event. So yeah. we don't see that there will be any, uh, there might be some tremors in the earth, but there's tremors all of the time. Yeah. And there's also lots of movement. And there's lots of movement in the planet always. There's hurricanes mm -hmm. forming. There's, you know, volcanoes erupting. Those are things that in the old days of man, where they didn't have the understanding of anything more than 12 miles away from them, their world was that. Right. <laughs> Our world is much bigger now because we're all connected in that way. So, but this is planetary. So from the earth perspective, we are just one small place like, like a Houston. Um, energetically, you will be able to take advantage of new energies that, that come in alignment because this is an example of alignment that right. is almost impossible. People bet against it. It's almost like the human being lining up with its true self. It's very rare yes. that there's human beings walking around that truly completely aligned, mm -hmm. like a Jesus. We keep coming back to Yeshua or to Jesus or however you want to say it. But this is that moment where the impossible alignment does happen. So we do wish that man wouldn't always look for the doom and everything. Right. For the, the life and the aff affirmation of it. Transformation right. sometimes is cataclysmic. Yes. <laughs> but let this transformation be cataclysmic within you so that the rebirth within you is great. Use this as a confirmation of your own ability to align. That's what we'll just say about it. We don't believe that on September 24th, life will be that much different. Check back with us and see maybe we won't be here. So there will be no question. We always think if the world is going to end, then who will really know because no one will be left. Right. The fact that we can speculate and then the next year it's something else and something else. Look for the life in something as opposed to the death of it. Right. But, but know that impossible alignments are possible. <laughs> and however rare. So if I think it's, it's possible right. within the heavens as above, so below, it's possible within us all. Yes. So... I, I I think it's quite fascinating. And I just want to ask one follow-up question to that. Sure. Was I, I don't know that I believe that the planet's alignment, 
now, before, in the past, or in the future were just kind of happenstance. I, I sort of get a sense that alignments are intentional whenever they've occurred. Um, alignments, that, it's, it's, it's like a game of, it's like a dance, really. And sometimes you just come together with your partner at that perfect moment. And sometimes your partner has a partner and your partner has a partner. Mm -hmm. It's like a giant line dance. Yeah. So <laughs> there okay. are things that are, there's energies that are involved in planetary movement, you know, the, those things. So when they do, you talk about magnetic fields coming together and, and you know, some of them work together. Sometimes they push apart. There's, there's all kinds of things happening. There's gaseous, uh, gaseous, substances that are closer together that cause reactions it's it's on so many levels it's impossible to say with one little thing uh, so okay. it's just the same thing as if you put if you put uh baking soda in some sort of substance like soda water if you put like baking soda in coca-cola it explodes right. <laughs> so th that's what happens and when planets come together, when they block out light, when they have their magnetic fields going together, there's actual reactions that happen because they come into that alignment. But it's not permanent alignment. They don't get there and get stuck. It's a continual movement. But if you're you know, moving things around, eventually some things are gonna line up. And the fact that they're all lining up together is rare. It's happened in the history of our planet once, now for the second time. So celebrate wow. it. Know that alignment is possible, even when you think yeah. it's not. Even when they say it shouldn't happen, can happen, can happen. And you're going to witness yeah. it. Ah, you're going to witness it, and you will know it. There's a difference, yeah. eh? Believing it's yeah. possible, thinking I might be able to be a healer, and then knowing that it's possible because you're completely aligned. You says it ha you say it has happened once. It's time happened once. Oh wow. That's one that's time. fascinating. Can I ask how many millions or billions, or can I ask what the We what can't count that the, far. Then the, <laughs> that's it's happened that's once. But people don't know it because they weren't here. We know it because right. we have access to other information. One time it's happened. But this is the second time and you get to witness it. You know, a full moon happens, yeah. a full moon, a full eclipse, not, not a moon, full eclipse is what we're trying to say. The one just happened, happens maybe twice in your lifetime. That's also yeah. a very rare event. Right. So this is happening and this is ultra rare. This is like finding a diamond in a... <laughs> 10,000 foot hole uh, <laughs> sand sand pile. <laughs> do, you know what, do you know what we're saying? So take yeah. the take the idea of alignment and realize that it's possible. That is what we take from it. Well, what do you, you expect so will much. happen? We want to know what you expect would happen in that case. What do you think will happen? We can tell you if it's going to happen or not. Um, I expect that it will be something that we'll notice. I don't know in which, what, what way that will be. Energetically, I you'll notice. I was, I was just getting ready to say, I believe there was going to be, and I believe there will be an energetic release of some kind. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that's the extent of it. I don't speculate and I don't um, spend time imagining any gloom or doom scenario. Well, when you get together with eight of your best friends, do you uh -huh. have a good time and have a party? Is oh, yeah. it a joyful experience? <laughs> yes. yes these, pe these people good. that you haven't seen in many years and you finally get together and you, find you f finally find a place to stand perfectly in alignment with each other. Is that not a yes. celebration? Yes. Well, yes, very much. We would expect it would be a celebration and not something negative. A rare That's event wonderful. like this is not negative. It's to be celebrated. Right. to be appreciated and if you want to see doom and gloom you will get doom and gloom because you will get what you believe so see it as the most rare thing ever the most amazing thing ever wow these eight 
beings, these planets, planets have consciousness. Gaia has a consciousness. Yeah. These planets, yeah. these planetary bodies also have consciousness. Yeah. And they're coming together in perfect alignment. Ah. How I exciting is that? That's it's so I, exciting. Yeah, it is. It's very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> you thought that the Lionsgate portal was powerful. Yeah, Get ready. <laughs> Get ready. So set your intention for that burst of energy that comes, for that oh. alignment energy that comes. Where do you want it to transport you? What wow. reality do you want to shift to? Wow. So choose what you want and then shift to the place where that's true because you're going to have a whole bunch of energy allowing you to do that. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so very much, Theos. Thank you. Many blessings to you. Many blessings to you, too. Thank you for asking us that question. Does anyone else have a question? I guess it's... Is it my turn? It's your turn, Max. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, same topic. Uh, I'm kind of oscillating between the ideas of global disasters and uh, absolutely... Um, managed illusion. What do you wish? What do you wish? I to guess happen? the most interesting would be someone in between, maybe much closer to absolutely managed, with a little bit of ultimate destruction thrown in. Is that what you're? No wanting? ultimate. No, just a little bit of uh, fun and. Uh, was was Houston not enough destruction for you? Um, no, I refuse to judge. No, it was a joke. No, uh, when it comes to serious things, my um, really serious things, my question is, um, with how much, what is the ratio between uh, the um, us down here and like humans down here in the physical, the physical minds, and the guides and all other spirits who manage the, the who helps their situation. So, with all the situation here, um, like globally, mm -hmm. there is like so many billion humans, physical minds, creating the reality, and also there is so many spirit guides and angelics and elementals and higher level spirits and um, aliens and interdimensionals and other dimensionals so what is the ratio it's like there should be like real really we would well say eight to one eight humans one others no we, we we we're not making a joke about that there we we want you to understand that it's 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 like in uh inverted triangles these mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We think Don will understand this very well. There are inverted triangles of energy that come down to the pinpoint of each human. And within each human, each being, there are is the hierarchy that goes above. But we want you to also understand that the whole universe is encompassed in that inverted triangle. And it brings us back to something that we were saying earlier in an earlier channeling, but it lines up perfectly, so we will say it. This shape, this triangular shape, is the sacred uh, uh, pathway of creation, this mm -hmm. yani shape. Everything comes from it. And you can imagine that at the top of this is the masculine feminine energy and at the bottom is the product of that you being the human but within that that it, it's it's multi it's multiplied many many things but through this shape comes everything all of creation comes so there's many many hierarchies but we would say to you that there's eight distinct levels where that, that has infinite beings on each level so if you're talking about one human human being, they have access to the entire infinite universe that's above them. Right. So each human being will have infinite access to as many beings as there are, and there are infinite amounts because so many beings are just thought forms created in the moment by the by the being that's thinking them. 
Right. So you do have hierarchies of angels and gods and helper energies and just many, many, many different levels. You have the, the, right. the, the spirits and everything above it. But Try there's to... eight levels. And within each level, there there is infinite beings and energies. But what is the question? Trying to establish my relationship with a possibility of a big disaster, my personal relationship. I would like mm -hmm. to estimate the risks. And to estimate the risks, like should I prepare more for a disaster or should I ignore completely the disaster? Like two extremes. I'm what trying gives to you peace? Second. What gives you peace? What gives you peace? Uh, of course, ignoring it as much as possible, mm -hmm. but then I kind of become worried that I'm ignoring something important and I'm not with reality. So knowing about things, but kind of ignoring them partly. But really the unknown is how much is it under control of the guides and, and the divine forces? Because if it is under control, I shouldn't worry about that. It's an impossible question that you're asking. We can't tell you 100%. One, because there are infinite possibilities and you are also an infinite being. So you, this Max, this Max right now that we're talking to, we will say to you, we don't see any ultimate disaster coming for you. We've said that before, and that's diametrically opposed to a lot of things that are being taught, but we will say that we don't see it. We don't see any tragedy of cataclysmic proportions coming. We could be wrong because your belief system may be stronger than our knowing for ourselves. So we will say to you, we don't see that happening. Prepare if it gives you joy, prepare, don't prepare if it doesn't. If it keeps you up nights, then prepare, and at least you're prepared. So we no, don't see it happening. Up, no. We do see things coming, but they always come. There will be hurricanes. There will be, there will be disasters. There will be oil spills. There will be things. There will be shootings. Those are things that happen within the planet. You only have to look around. But know that you are in the perfect place that you need to be. And if there is something that is coming and you're not supposed to be part of it, you will have something happen. Your eight levels of beings will conspire in such a way to have you leave on vacation at that very moment or uh, have it just miss you or something would happen. Or if you're supposed to be in it, you will be in it. But if you are in it, it will really be your choice. And it will also be your choice on a higher spiritual level to get around it. But that's one of those questions that's impossible to answer because it really has everything to do with what you've decided before you came in this world, how much freedom you decided to roll the game of chance with. So we would say there's no point in worrying about anything unless you enjoy it. So, but we don't see it happening. We do not see, we do not see cataclysm. We do not see the collapse of the financial systems. We don't see it. Ah. A lot of people see it, but we tend to look on the bright side of life. So we will stand and we've always said it. There was years ago where they were saying California was going to drop into the ocean and all of these things. And we didn't see it then. And we told Karen it was not going to happen. And so far it hasn't happened. Oh, nice. Thank you. So we don't see it. We see that this week and next week, and the week after will be adventurous. They may be tumultuous. There will be a lot of things happen happening, but we'll still be here to talk about it in several weeks. So the most important thing is that you do the things that make you happy, the things that bring you joy, and don't worry so much about things that are happening on a different level. 
unless you're Dawn, and then you can worry about them. But that's his job. So don't worry, um, Max. Thank you. Me. You're welcome. Um, a related question is here. It relates to my local friends, where I teach, um, help them with, with healing, but also give them psychic uh, advice and things of mm -hmm. that sort. And um, in many in many times, many times it comes to jobs and finances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I give them advice from my perspective, as if you know they would have a freedom of choice. But sometimes I'm thinking maybe they're supposed to suffer financially. Maybe they have no way of you know. Maybe the the path for financial success is completely closed to them. Is it a possibility? Should I even consider that, or should I still uh, give them, you know, give them my perspective as I, if it, if it was from my experience, I, I, that I don't understand. We we were talking about this a little bit earlier, but we will just say that there's everyone's at a different level of what they believe is possible for them, and everyone is also at a different level as what they believe they have opportunities to do. If you ever see someone who's really succeeded in something, really, they've gone through as much hard time as they have gone through prosperous time. And sometimes the difference is really not going after something in the way that they say that they would like to. That's one possibility. The other possibility is yes, they have chosen this world to have an experience. And it's very difficult for you to know if that's the case. The only thing you can do is share things from your perspective and hope that they take what you say to heart and that they make steps in that direction. Sometimes the journey of it is just as valuable as the achievement. Uh -huh. So, okay, they become successful and then, then what? People think that their life begins in the moment that they think they've reached a goal. The joy is in the journey. So the process is what we're here to experience. We're not here to just come be successful, whatever that means. We're here to experience things. So yes, some people do have what on an earth basis we would look at is, is a more difficult time than other people, but it's an experience. And you can have less than anything and be happy. You can have an easier life with material goods being, you know, at your fingertips. That's it. There's a difference, but you can have, be very happy. And the happiness in, inside is what is, is, is the measure of success in our opinion are you rich in spirit are you rich in compassion are you rich in your genuineness are you rich in love those are the successful things so there's many people who are very wealthy and really really screwed up people and they are very unhappy so the goal is happiness the goal is alignment however rare that is that's really the goal. What you can teach them may be better than how to be a success in business is how to align themselves with being happy. You know, so many things have to do with how honest are you as a person? How genuine are you? You know, how do you treat other people? Karmically, whatever you're putting out, you're getting back. That is the way it is. You're putting out a lot of negativity. You're just going to get it back. You're going to get your cataclysms and your your financial collapses. But financial collapse can be individual. Realize that. There's a lot mm -hmm. of people who don't need a, a, the entire planet to collapse for their world to be really terrible. Mm -hmm. So the perspective of the world can change. We don't have an easy answer because there are so many moving parts in it. So we would say to you, if it's your joy to teach them, teach them. But ultimately, any change that happens within an individual happens because that they change. You can only just give them 
whatever it is you have to offer. But the change comes from the people, the people themselves. And there's some people that are very satisfied with a certain level, and that's perfectly good. That's perfectly fine. And for them, they have everything they need. They have enough. So success is a very, very difficult thing to measure. We have obscene levels of what we consider to be wealth, but we, I wouldn't necessarily, or we wouldn't necessarily say that that's uh, success. We would say that's a lot of money in the bank, but it's not necessarily being wealthy in all of the things that are really, really important. You know, the most spiritual people, truly aligned people, want nothing and are happy with it. So attachment to things and the desire for things has a lot of people very miserable. Maybe work on letting them not be so attached to that stuff. And then they'll be a lot happier. And if they're happier, things start flowing. And then opportunities that they couldn't find before start flowing in. So we would also encourage you to uh, encourage them to see the success they do have. The, do, they, do they have a place that they're living? Do they have their food to eat? Do they have friends around them? Do they laugh every day? Those are successes. So for people who are material, they're listening to this saying, well, I still want that. Well, then fine, you can have it. But we're telling you that you have it and then what? And then what? And what else do you want else? And what, what next? And what next? And what next? So sometimes people choose to have a more difficult experience than other people. That's true. And some people stay in it longer than you would like to. That's also true. And there's other people who will slide right through it and move into something else. So. Um, let me expand the question. Um, sure. Uh, so everything is illusion, an illusion, and um, just it is an illusion, illusion in the grander scheme of things. But when you're here, it's real. Uh huh. It's real. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, and then I just started noticing that healing seems to be also an illusion, and the business success is an illusion like uh you know give a healing to someone yes there is a certain improvement certain upgrade which happens but then the people would usually and me too would usually come back right where they were before just because their mind kind of tends to go the standard ways habitual ways and they get back into their normal self and the, the every all the symptoms return Mm -hmm. And the same thing with business, it seems like with healing and, and business, it seems like no matter what you do, on some days you feel good, on some days you feel bad, on some days you have financial improvement, on some days you have financial uh, down downfall, and it seems to have nothing to do with what we do. It's like, I think it's just, you know, there is certain pattern of pre-designed health for you and no matter what you do, you still go with ups and downs, which are pre-programmed. And, uh, you know, like like I'm trying to eat as healthy as possible, and Jim, try, uh, Jim just ignores all of that and eats his uh, normal uh, American routine with, uh, with McDonald's and stuff. And, uh, and uh, I suffer with my stomach, and he doesn't. So I guess it's just a pre-programmed and I have, doesn't, don't have to do anything. You know, it really, it, it seems like, it, you know, I, my ups and downs in health are not in any way related to what I do. Is it true? Is it, um, it's just an illusion that we really matter what we do? Well, yes and no. People have different constitutions, and it's not so. It's not as easy as only believing. You do have a genetic constitution, but again, that genetic constitution is a is one of those pre choices that you've made. You can you. It's about finding your alignment and finding the foods that don't affect your stomach as much. 
you know, that's a, that is part of a journey that you have, but you can never really compare yourself to another person. It's like saying that person is tall and I'm short. So I guess it just doesn't matter. You have your own individual makeup and you have your own vehicle that you have to tend to, you know, and, and Jim has also his vehicle that has its own issues. Maybe not the stomach thing, but other things. So Yes, it matters what you do. It matters how you feel about it, too. So, if you if you if you take everything uh, and and just eat whatever you want, then you will get the results of how that works in your body. Your body is its own unique mechanism. You can't you can't cookie cutter bodies. Yes, they are all made up the same way, and they have organs basically in the same place. But there's different blood types. There's different genetic. Uh, makeup there's different all of those different things so again there is individual as the individual soul that's there and they have their own their, their own way of working in the world so does that answer your question we have skype now uh, just just one more expansion uh sure. there was uh, an observation that but we, we were for speaking of that we want to interrupt you because we wanted to tell you something that and you said the word and and we had just forgotten for one moment we'll tell you we liked what you were doing as you were listing everything because you were observing everything and that's a very good place to be the ability to observe it because when you can observe it you don't necessarily have to be affected by it and we wanted to give you a compliment in that way that as you look at things as how they are and how you observe them then you can sort of stay a little bit removed and then choose what you want to really dive into and you're doing that and that's a very very good thing and that's a very very good quality that you have the ability to observe without really judging it but just noticing that it's there we would say the same thing to you about some of the the body things that you're saying know that it's there know that it is and 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 don't get don't really dive too much into it just realize sometimes you you can eat mcdonald's we would say don't go to McDonald's ever, but that's your choice. But notice that we, we, we wanted to tell you that that's a very good quality because that's what we strive to tell people is to become the observer, to step back from things. So we just wanted to let you know that, but please go ahead. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, yes, um, <laughs> observant. So somebody observed, many people observed uh, mm. that during the war in Russia, Yes. Uh, the diseases went away. Lots of people felt that all sicknesses they had before the war just went away for the period of the war, and then the, when the war ended, they came back. So it's uh, something very mysterious to me. It, it goes against human logic. Why would more stress and more um, danger make people healthier in many ways? So my hypothesis was that maybe the spirits of sickness were busy doing some other things. Or the attention you know, to those spirits of sickness was busy doing other things. Like they were like the spirits of sickness and death were busy killing people. And so they didn't have time to, to do their job on making people sick. In a way, yes, but we will go a little further. Uh, Karen had an experience in her meditation just a few days ago where she went into a very deep meditation and then she went into sort of a, a bliss state and she actually was able to uh, interact with different things like pain and fear and anger and hate and, and, and all of these what we would call negative emotions and negative things but she didn't see them as as emotions she saw them as actual beings as actual spirits of these things and she was able to interact with them but before she interacted with them she put on a sort of coat of love and 
as she stood there and she interacted with them, she was able to actually see them in their place and in their role and to see them as teachers and to see them as other beings. And she was able to dance with them and then again say to them, thank you for what you've taught me. And the reason that we're saying that is because she didn't have to experience them to know that they were there. And when you're talking about what happened in Russia, which is a phenomena, and, and I don't know if it's been documented or in some way, but we will take your experience as, as a documentation of it. It's the focus upon it and not getting lost in it. Other things were much more important in that period than staying alive. Staying alive was more important or making sure that your children had some bread when there was very little bread. You had to be very aware of your surroundings and aware of how you can manipulate your world in order to survive. So that became the focus. The focus became on making sure that your family was okay, making sure that you had food, making sure that you had fuel, making sure that you weren't in, you know, in line of bombs, making sure that your neighbor wasn't really your enemy. You don't have time to be sick in that way. You don't have time to have disease. And the focus shifted away from it. That's very powerful of a lesson. It doesn't only have to be in the face of great tragedy, but you hear also of, of a belief shifting when a child is pinned under a car and a mother is able to lift a car. Her belief in needing to save her child overran everything, also overran her belief that she didn't have the strength to lift the car. Now, yes, adrenaline comes through the body and makes it possible, but she's not even thinking about that process. She's thinking about, I'm moving this car because I want my child to live. Do you understand? So they're not thinking about the disease. A lot of times disease, when you focus upon it, it grows. You don't have time. There's a very big, significant thing that happens in the Netherlands that, that Karen doesn't understand. It's called burnout. And many people that she knows have had burnout. Well, in her mind, it's not a thing. It's not a real thing because she doesn't have time to be burned out. And in America, you never see people really burning out. They don't have time for it. It doesn't happen. But here in the Netherlands, it's a thing because people believe it. They, they, they get stressed. They, they all burned out and that's it. They're, they're down for the count for six, eight, ten months. So that's not a criticism. It's just an observation. If you don't have time for it, a lot of times it won't happen. It's the same thing as if you are very busy for a week and you think, if I can just get to the end of the week and get all this stuff done, then I can relax. And what happens is you get to the end of the week and then you think, oh, and then you're exhausted and then you're down, you're out. It hits you after because the main focus is getting through the week. So for a lot of those people, they didn't have time to be ill. It wasn't an option in that moment. We're not saying that being ill is a luxury in any way, but they had other things they had to focus on. So it, it talks really about the power of the mind. Now think if, if you could only think about all the stuff that you have to do, that you have the opportunity to do, and then you don't have time to be sick at all. You don't have time for it. You have time for this because this is really what's important. Does that make sense? All right. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes. Thank you for Meditating. But it's an, an interesting phenomena, don't you think? Absolutely. For an entire country to stop being ill? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I pass the microphone to Pete. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hello. 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 Um, hello. I'm here to... Uh, say hello. <laughs> hello. Time. We'll say um, that to you. Mm -hmm. um, 
I was going to ask one of my questions, but I was going to say thank you for helping me around certain days, certain months. Um, I had some stressful times that I had, was in, so I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. That's it? Um, no question? Mm -hmm. No questions? Yeah. Okay. I have a question. Mm. <laughs> Um, my question for today, for this moment, is, is that I had an experience. Um, my experience was, is that I was meditating, uh, two days ago, uh, two days, about two days ago, I had a meditation experience where my third eye was wide open. I was able to see uh see certain dimensions and other beings but at some point i had a, i had my had my third eye adjusted and set it up to where i was sitting and as i opened my third eye i started to see like this silhouette being um with slightly glowing eyes mm -hmm. and to me i was very intrigued i wasn't frightened I was actually very interested and I felt like there was like a familiarity to uh, that this energy and when I try and then the next thing I know I started to connect more and more and started to see people that are actually from another dimension and I was wanting to know if like what was that who wanted to know if that if I could be able to know who that being was. Well, it sounds the way we look. That's how we look. And we are also rather transparent and our eyes do tend to glow if you look at them, but that's because of the light energy that we have and we don't really have physical form. So that light just comes right out. We will just say to you that this being, did you feel the connection to the being? When you were talking yes, I did. well we will say to you that it has to be then the multi-dimensional part of you it wouldn't be anything outside of you it would be you and it would be your your higher self coming and and letting you you see it so that you know who you are and in fact it is you but in a in a higher dimension so it would be an aspect of you it would necessarily be you but it would be part of your whole oversoul and, and it would be a higher dimensional aspect of you. So the it's familiarity kind of is because you were looking at yourself or an aspect of yourself. It kind of did the whole ring effect um, or a hoop effect, hula hoop effect. What is that? Um, when you see yourself in the mirror in a sense, and mm -hmm. you just wake up and the, you wake up from that like oh my gosh oh my gosh like like this feeling that it's similar and it's like looking in the mirror well that's exactly what it is in that way so congratulations for for meeting yourself and you will be continue to be able to meet yourself if you want Sometimes you won't necessarily see the being, but, but now that you know what you looked like, then you don't have to imagine it so much. And, and actually holding that image will help you connect. So it's very nice that you've got to experience it. That's amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. I think that also includes too other beings like lyrians, um, felines and also, Pleiadian and Andromedan, like I had those um, flashes of light hitting my third eye, and then suddenly I see the whole face. Well, you will have very many incarnations. You're not just one thing. It's not, you're, you're not, you know, in, in any way kind of a pure blood. You are, you are all, you will have many different aspects and many different incarnations on many different timelines. And then those that are outside of time, those that are, that are just, 
you know, incarnate light beings that are not in a time dimension. So you have a full spectrum. Max was asking about how many beings are really connected to one. Well, it's infinite beings, truly. So there'll be those that are closer to you that you will have direct access to, and there'll be those that you never meet or never even know about. But the ones that do come to you in, in, in their many different forms, those are also just you. So there's nothing outside of you, really. But like we were saying, there's different timelines and there's different dimensions and the, the things that are on timelines that are closest to where you are, your consciousness right now, are going to be the easiest ones to see. The other ones are so far out that they have their own beings that they're seeing and experiencing. Just enjoy it and play with it and get to know yourself and all the different aspects. The one thing that you would like, we would like to tell you that would be nice for you to do is to try to start sending your consciousness out to those different beings and looking through their eyes and learning about all the different things that your soul is doing. If you think about yourself as a sort of diamond, a diamond has many facets, and but it's one diamond. So you're the diamond, you, you're, all of you are the diamond, but every facet is looking out it's in its own way and having its own experiences. So you're getting to see all the many facets of you. So get to know yourself. That's the best thing. And invite, invite more and more of yourself to come say hello. We know that with Karen, she's very close to us. So it was very easy for us to access her. She's in our sort of direct line of selves. So that's how we came to her in that way. And we would say it works very much that way. The things that are closest to you, you will have the most access to. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. Good. I'm just having a lot of fun. Uh, Good. connecting with everything that I connect with. Well, you should connect to as yeah. many beings of yourself that you that you find it a joyful and blissful thing to do. And we hear a dog in the background. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, next, my next, thank you for that. But You're welcome. My next question would be for, for let's see. Mm. Is there any, uh, ask this question, but it's so vague that, that, and broad that it's, it's. Well, ask it anyway, we'll see what we can do. Okay. Mm. Um, we think this will be the last question. So, yes. Yes. No, not for you, but for, but for the webinar. We, we, okay. we, yes. Okay. Let's see. Based on my path, spiritual path, I've been I've been asking the universe, or asking for myself, part of aspects of myself and the universe, if I could be able to become a star traveler, in a sense. Um, and the broader perspective that, um, in that on my path of seeing that events, certain events that will occur in a sense, like in the energy and the energetic response to it. We would say to you, and then we, we, we are glad you told us about your first experience, that your experience in meeting an, an astral form of yourself, a, a higher dimensional form of yourself, is, is the beginning of that. And when you talk about astral or intergalactic, it's inside of you, this ability to travel. The idea that ships are going to land and you're going to you know, jump into them is, is not as, is not as close of a reality as your ability to go inside and, and, and have that connection. So 
when you go into the meditation and you have these experiences, these are real experiences. So the thing for you to do is to go into meditation more with the intention of travel and with the intention of getting out into the universe and meeting the different beings. If you go inside that way, you don't need a ship. You are the ship. This body, this internal part of you is your is your holodeck in a way. So you just only have to go inside because when you really do go inside, you're in the infinite mind of God. You don't have any boundaries. You 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 can go and and do and experience everything. So we would like you to go back to yourself that came to you and say, hi, I'd like to go on a trip. Take me, take me on a trip. And then as you get more confident, you'll be able to go on your own. But invite those beings that you are meeting and ask them to take you. But that was the first step. But it's really inside. Ships show up because of beings that are on a density that's closest to our own. But the big non-physical ones, you can't get to them on a ship. You have to go inside. So you would say you're on the right path and you have that ability and you are starting it. And the reason that that's awakening, that question is awakening in you is because that's what you're actually doing. So the goal is to become a little more conscious of it so that it's not happening only in dream state and you're not remembering because that's no fun. It's better to remember. So it's never fun when you, when you have something. When you've sort of thought that you so knew that you went, but you weren't sure in this being you think you might have known, but you don't know. So we would say to you, do as much in meditation as you can because then you will be very conscious. Ask questions always along the way. If you experience a being, your first question should be, who are you? Hello. You know, I'm Pete. I'd like to say hello. Who are you? And don't just wonder, oh, I wonder who that is. Ask. Ask the question. Set the intention. Do as much consciously with what you want and what you want you to experience. Do that as consciously as you can so that you don't have to wait until, you know, we're talking on a webinar to ask us. We're happy to answer you, but the, the answer is ask as many questions as you can. Go in with the intention of, I want to know. Never forget to ask, whether you're in a lucid dream or whatever. Set the intention that I will always ask where I am, what's happening, and, and can I do it again? Always, always, always do that so that you're in control of, of your astral self and your astral life because you need to be able to direct it. And the experiences you have, we said this again, but we're going to say it again. The experiences that you have in the meditation, when you're experiencing these beings, these are real experiences. And you would not have them in your waking, walking around world. It's an esoteric experience. That's why the hidden mysteries are not written in books. They cannot be written in books. You cannot read them on a paper. They have to happen inside you. And that knowing comes from going there inside. So it's a big, big universe out there, but it's all in here. It's all in here. In my in here, and then you're in there. So, but have a great time. Let us know how you do. Yeah. I will. <laughs> Yes. Thank you for that question, because it's important to know that it's not outside of you. It's all inside of you. And the deepest knowing that you have will not come from words you hear from someone, but will come from your own experiences, the things that you find inside. That's where it all is. And that is the thing for every individual to find. It's those, those answers that only can come from inside. You can't even hear the words. You have to have the knowing. And the knowing comes from in there. There's not even words for some of the stuff that you will experience. But you'll know it. And you'll say, oh, I wish I could tell you because it, there's, I, I can't. 
but you know. And that's what's really important. I've seen a lot of things lately in my third eye that is incredible that I can't explain it to everyone, including people in the chat room. Yeah. Um, that's I've the way it is. So much things that I have seen. It's like well, you're seeing things, things through your third eye that you could never see with your own physical eyes, you know? So you're experiencing energies that you can't experience with your physical body. You're, you're able to go places that you can't even get there, if, even if you were on a ship, because they don't exist in the material world. It's a vast, vast, incredible universe out there. In there, you should say. Well, thank you, Theo, since I can see you from my third eye. I managed to thank you. Well, we send I you love from you our eye. heart, so. Much love. Much love. Thank you. We would just like to say to people, we've had a lot of different questions, and, and as in every kind of talk, they all seem to line up together, which is sort of the divine design of the way things go. Always seek the impossible alignment because it's really possible. Always know that your answers are inside and that you can be anything that you know yourself to be. So we would say believe, but it's not about believing, it's about knowing. We know that you're love. We know that you chose to be here. We know that all is well with you at all the times. Everything is an experience. And as much as you can observe things, the more you can play with them. So we would encourage you to observe and choose what you like to play with. And the rest, just let it be. We would also encourage you to just, as much as you can, give and share love to other people. So, thank you and, and namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, Theo. Thank, thank you. We love you. We love you. Too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> what? I have a hungry dog here. Come here. So I'm back. Hello. Thank you. Max, are you there? Anybody? Oh, thank you, Karen. I was speaking, but uh, <laughs> my microphone was good. So we invite galactic language blessings, Arcturian, Yael, Pleiadian, what what language comes to you? Stephanie, are you ready to speak? Huh. Go ahead, David. Well, I was just saying that was really good today. It was, it was wonderful. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, it really was. Good, thank you. Thank Any you. Blessings? You all look so different. <laughs> I have a blessing. Go ahead. Oh, perfect. Let's see. Roho ria na iya ha. Roho soto ria ha. Ihi ya ha. Romo ho ria ka. Iya roho si iya. Tata iya ka ihi ya ha. Roho mo iya ha niya ka. Mia siya ha, toho riya ka isi hiya ha, ma riya ka, di hiya ma di shisi 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 ha, ba riya mo ho riya ka, ni hiya ha, ba riya si hi hiya ha, toho ro yo ho so to to ya ba riya ka. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? 
All right, I will do a little guided meditation to, to okay, just uh, sit comfortably, relax. Place your right hand on your heart and lift your left hand to receive the energy from above, just to symbolize the energy coming from above. Om 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 and join me in the sound. Synchronize, join me in the sound, and you will be will receive a little, a little beautiful download of the bliss for the ending for the completion of the webinar. And with that, we complete the webinar. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Thanks. Enjoy the long weekend. All right. Yep. Some of you in their solar system, planet Earth, Milky Way galaxy, uh, North American continent, United States of America. Good day. <laughs>